you look at the true sense on why we want to promote aviation, why we want to make it one of the best sectors in the country, in the whole world, because when we talk about aviation, we talk about tourism. When we talk about aviation, we talk about economic activity. When we talk about aviation, we talk about real estate growth. We talk about job creation. When we talk about aviation, we talk about industry. When we talk about aviation, we talk about commerce, we talk about trade. And we talk about aviation, we talk about culture. And when we talk about aviation, we talk about agriculture also. And that is why aviation is a very important nodal sector that needs to be given that push. And with, with this idea, I'll get some water, sir. Please. Uh. And it is with this idea that the whole aviation sector has been thoroughly deeply understood on what the true potential India can have. And we have seen that there are multiple gaps also. Now 90,000 crores capex has been put into the infrastructure uh, to create the infrastructure in airport infrastructure. But creating infrastructure that itself is one challenge. And I, when I took the charge as a minister for this aviation, sir, I have promised the people of this country that... Thank you. She <laughs> has always been so caring, sir. Like a yes. mother, always. Thank you, man. So, when we look deep, it is not about just creating the infrastructure, but it is about connecting them also. Now, you can spend a lot of money, you can create the infrastructure, you can create more airports, but the ultimate challenge, thank you. The ultimate challenge is how do you connect? And that is where, bringing in all the aspects of the government, we created the Udan scheme, which is Uday Deshka Am Nagri. Through the Udan scheme, the challenge of these airlines, because it is a market-driven industry, where they feel there might be a non-viability in running a route, the government has taken the responsibility a little bit on himself, and it has said that, why don't we provide the viability gap funding? It was the first time that it has been done at such a large scale. And through the Udan scheme, now we have started 609 routes in the country in just eight years span of time. Nowhere in the world you would have seen such a scheme, which has been run by the government itself, so that the non-viable routes, the airlines can come and start the routes and facilitating the routes. And we have operationalized 86 airports under Udan. And out of these 86 airports, 20 were underserved, but 66 airports were totally unserved. What I mean by unserved is that not a single flight was going to these uh, airports. But that was a challenge the government has taken up. Now we have constructed the airports, but we have to start the airline connectivity also. And through the Udan scheme, we have given the viability gap funding and we were able to run all these airports. We were giving them those connections, which was very, very required for the people of that state or of that region or of the airport. And we have operationalized 86. And we can proudly say that Udan has been a real success story of the Indian aviation, which are showcasing to the whole world under the leadership of Narendra Modi ji. And why I say the whole world, sir? In fact, in September, we have had one conference also, uh, Asia-Pacific Ministerial Conference, where 41 countries were participating and there were stakeholders from aviation across the globe also who were participating. And 29 countries have sent in the best of the people who represent aviation from their countries. And I have heard all of them speak in that conference and they have proudly said, the real thing that we can pick up from India today is how it has improved the domestic connectivity within the country and how it has launched the RCS Udan scheme so that it could facilitate the regional aviation in a very big way. Because for them, most of the countries, sir, for them, the aviation becomes more of an international affair. How do you connect your country better to another country? But a lot of them couldn't crack the challenge of internal connectivity. But now with this Udan scheme, we are showcasing it to the world that a little push, a little commitment from the government, you can create wonders, and that is what we have done through the Udan scheme. And now through the Udan scheme, have, we have kind of address the accessibility. Now, the other thing that I've mentioned after taking charge as a minister was that I want to bring in affordability also. And I understand all the concerns that each and every member has raised regarding the airfares. I'm also a citizen of this country, and I was also a member, and before member, I was also a passenger. So I know one of the challenges that the people of this country face when they're traveling, and I understand the true spirit in which people would have spoken about the airfares also. But you have to understand that airfares regulation is 
this debate has been there for quite some time, sir. And internationally also, the process that they follow is they keep the in aviation air ticket mechanism as a very deregulated sector because that is how the whole sector moves forward. That is how there is a win-win situation for everyone. The market plays its game and everyone gets facilitated in the process. And this is an international procedure. Nowhere in the world, any country has been regulating the air prices and making, seeing a progress in aviation. Everyone has a very deregulated sector only. And in fact, in our country also, at one point of time, there was a, regula a regulation on the airfares. Through the Air Corporations Act. Now, when was this Air Corporations Act taken out? It was in the year 1994 that uh, the then government, that the then leaders thought, if the aviation needs a real push, then we have to deregulate, and that is when the deregulation happened in 1994. The Air Corporations Act was taken away, in which it was mentioned that air caps need to be capped. So after that, it has been a free market. It has been a market with a dynamic air uh, 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 airfare mechanism happening. And now, if you see, I have another report also because many reports have mentioned, and we have done. I have also been thoroughly studying on the airfare mechanism. And we within the ministry, I would like to tell the whole house and the people of this country that from the ministry, we also monitor the prices. We have a tariff monitoring unit under our DGCA, which thoroughly looks after each and every fare that is happening in the country. And there is a liability on the airlines also before they, they decide on a price for a, cert, uh, for a certain route or for a certain sector, they have to send it to us in the DGCA.